Shalom, shalom. Dave Ames here with Clouds of Torah, and we're going to continue with, with Is There a Monotheistic Trinity? Part 10. So um, I'm going to do part A and part B on this because this section is a little long. So if we go right into this, the Holy Spirit and baptism. So the Holy Spirit of the God of Israel is mentioned without Jesus or baptism in the Tanakh on multiple occasions. So let's go into it. Um, Psalm 51 and 11. Do not cast, <clears throat> do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Um, so what the New Testament wants to do is take God, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus and break them up into three, but say they're all one. But if God has given his Holy Spirit to people, even if you broke it up as if it's separate from him, that would only be two. And this whole idea of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost is not present in the Tanakh. How it's mentioned in the New Testament, like get baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, right? They always try to like triple it up. But here, obviously, when David saying, don't take your Holy Spirit from me, he's talking to the Most High. He's not saying don't take the Holy Spirit from me as if it's separate. The Most High is holy and he is a spirit. He's called the Holy One. Because he is a he's not flesh and blood. He's he's spirit. He's a spiritual being. Whatever we want to term that, he's not physical. He doesn't live in our realm, if you for lack of a better term. So when it says his Holy Spirit, that's God Himself. He is the Holy Spirit. Or he is, you know what I'm saying? So it's not separate from him. It's part of him. Like my spirit is part of me. It's not me and then my spirit. I am my spirit, right? My spirit dwells in my, this body. So to try to break it up into three, we don't read, read it like that anywhere in the Tanakh. So Isaiah 63 and 10, but they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. So he turned himself against them as an enemy and he fought against them. Again, his Holy Spirit is part of him. It's not something separate. Isaiah 63 and 11. <clears throat> then he remembered the days of old, Moses and his people saying, where is he who brought them up out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he who put his Holy Spirit within them? So again, they had the Holy Spirit of the Most High without Jesus or baptism. How is that possible? Because in the New Testament, once you get baptized, you get the New Testament. I mean, you, you once you get baptized, you get the Holy Spirit in the New Testament, but only sometimes. It's not like an automatic thing, and we're going to see that in a minute. So in Daniel 4 and 8, but at last came, at last Daniel came before me. His name is Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God, and him is the spirit of the Holy God. And I told the dream before him, saying, so again, the spirit of the Holy God was in Daniel. The spirit of the Holy God, not the Holy Spirit, as if it's some separate entity. That's not how the Tanakh um, explains it. So again, was baptism required to get the Holy Spirit before the Gospels? Numbers 11 and 17. I will come down and speak with you there and I will take some of the power of the spirit that is on you and put it on them. They will share the burden of the people with you so that you will not have to carry it alone. So Moses is, you know, basically complaining like I don't I have to deal with all these people and it's not easy. So the most I said some of that spirit that is on you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it on somebody else. Right. But again, he didn't have to get baptized to get it. Numbers 24 and 2, when Balaam looked out and saw Israel and camped by tribe and camped, when Balaam looked out and saw Israel and camped tribe by tribe, the spirit of God came on him. Excuse me. Did Balaam have to get baptized? Why not? Psalm 51 and 11, again, do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Did David have to get the Holy Spirit? by baptism when david was anointed it said the spirit came upon him mightily right when he got anointed david got the spirit balaam wasn't even an israelite but the spirit of god came on him because he was a prophet <clears throat> 
Psalm 143 and 10, teach me to do your will for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on level ground. Well, what is this good spirit? Is that separate from the Holy Spirit? Of course not. It's the spirit of God, which is good. Only God is good. It even says it in the New Testament. Which again, there's a distinction between God and Jesus because he's the one who said that. Why are you calling me good? Only God is good. And he's the one with the good spirit to lead me on level ground. Psalm 143 and 10. <clears throat> baptism. Was baptism or any worship of Jesus required to get the Holy Spirit before the Gospels? Matthew 1 and 18. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Was Mary baptized? was Mary a believer in Jesus as the Messiah when she got this Holy Spirit? Of course not. Right? But, but she had the Holy Spirit. So in the New Testament, to get the Holy Spirit has a whole nother, a whole nother doctrine attached to it, which is this baptism, right? But we don't see that in the Tanakh. And in the beginning of the New Testament, it's not there either. Luke 1, 167, his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied. Jesus is not even born yet, yet Zechariah is filled with the Holy Spirit. No baptism required. Luke 2, 25, now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. How was he able to be righteous? According to Paul, nobody can be righteous. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. How did he get the Holy Spirit was called righteous and devout without the blood of Jesus? Obviously, he was keeping the law. That's how <laughs> we see that in Luke 1, 6 and 7, 1, 5, 1, 5 and 6 about Zacharias and his wife. And obviously, if Simeon was righteous, the only way to be righteous, according to Deuteronomy 6, 25, is if you keep in the law. So if he was righteous and had the Holy Spirit upon him, obviously this was a righteous person who was keeping the law. Was he a sinner? Right? But he had the Holy Spirit on him, but he wasn't baptized and he wasn't a believer in Jesus as the Son of God or he didn't have to believe that Jesus rose from the dead or he didn't have to believe in any miracles of Jesus at all. None of that. Right? But he had the Holy Spirit. No baptism. Is Jesus given the Holy Spirit or is he the Holy Spirit? Because the idea of the Trinity is that these three are one. If you see in my last video about 1 John 5, uh, uh, 1 John 5, 6 through 8, there's so many problems with that. We know it was added, but it tries to make it seem like these three are in agreement or these three are one. But if Jesus is the Holy Spirit, why would he have to be given it? Matthew 3.16. I mean, depending on which gospel you're reading, it says, you know, he grew in spirit and wisdom and all these different things, but did he get it out? His baptism, was he born with it since the Holy Ghost got his mom pregnant? You know, when exactly does he have the Holy Spirit and why does he have to get it again once he gets baptized? Simeon didn't have to get baptized to get it, but Jesus does. Zacharias didn't have to get it to be baptized, but Jesus does. Mary didn't need it. Um, who else had the Holy Spirit? Uh, John the Baptist, right? Like all these people are called, you know, um, prophets and stuff. They didn't need to be baptized or believe in Jesus to get it, but Jesus has to be baptized to get the Holy Spirit. Matthew 3, 16, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water and behold, the heavens were open to him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and, alight and alighting upon him. He saw the spirit of God. Why doesn't it say his spirit? Why, didn't it, why doesn't it say he saw his spirit descending like a dove and alighting upon him? If he is the Holy Spirit, if they're three and they're one and they're equal, why does it specifically say he saw the spirit of God? And again, that's only one. That's not two. 
He doesn't say he saw God and the spirit. The spirit of God is one thing. That's God's spirit. And they're not separate. Mark 1 and 10, and immediately coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting and the spirit descending upon him like a dove. Now, in Mark, it just says the spirit. But in Matthew, it says he saw the spirit of God. Luke 3, 21 through 22, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And while he prayed, the heaven was open and the Holy Spirit descended upon him, descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, you're my beloved son in whom? And you, I am well pleased. So again, it says in Luca says the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form. Mark says the the Spirit descended upon him, but in Matthew it says he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. So it's telling you whose Spirit this is. It's not Jesus' Spirit. It's the Spirit of God. If you want to harmonize these gospels. Because if you take in Mark and Luke, they're making it seem like the Holy Spirit is its own thing. But that's not what Matthew says. Matthew, Matthew clearly says the spirit of God descending. Is the Holy Spirit given to the disciples at their baptism? Mark 1a, I indeed baptize you with water, but he will. But he will. But he will you withhold it with the Holy Spirit. That's worded kind of weird. I indeed baptize you with water, but he will you with the Holy Spirit. Hold on one second. Let me make sure that that's not a typo. Mark 1 and 8. Okay, let me fix that. Must have got copied weird. Okay. I indeed baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Okay. It doesn't say he will baptize you with the spirit of the Holy Spirit of God. It just says with the Holy Spirit. Let me make sure my share is working. Sometimes when I. <clears throat> okay. Matthew 3 and 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with, with the Holy Spirit and fire. So now it's avoiding the Spirit of God, right? It's not saying it's the Spirit of God. It's just saying it's the Holy Spirit, right? It's trying to separate it. <clears throat> Matthew 28, 19. Go, therefore, and make dis disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So now they're all three put together. As if this is a trinity, but we know it's not. Receive the Holy Spirit. Acts 2 and 38. Then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you his, who is that every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins. And you re shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now we know for Pentecost, in the New Testament, everybody's gathered together, everybody around from Jerusalem, right? Now, I have a whole video on this. Is was Pentecost a fulfillment of prophecy? But actually, let's read it. That way I'm not just paraphrasing. Because there's something I, I want to point out there. I should have put this in the slides, but I'm just going to read this real quick. Uh when the, this is Acts chapter two, verse one, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were with all, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sudden sound. There came a sound from heaven as a, a rushing uh, mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting when they, then there, <clears throat> then there appeared to them divided tongues as of a fire. And one sat 
upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, um, this is, um, they try to say that this comes from the book of Joel, right? But Joel doesn't talk anything about sp speaking in tongues, right? Joel's talking about prophecies and stuff like that. He's not talking about anybody speaking in tongues. But, um, so what's going on here is this is after the Jesus is supposedly risen from the dead. He's talking to them. He's gone up into heaven, right? So I'm going to back up to chapter one. And the last few verses says they propose to, uh, they're, they're picking more disciples. Therefore, of these men who have accompanied us, who have accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John to the day when he spoke, when he when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us at his resurrection. And they proposed to Joseph called Bar 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 Barsabas, who was surnamed Justice, and. Matthias and they prayed and said, Oh Lord, who know the hearts of all show which of these two you have chosen to take part in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell that he might go to his own place. And they cast their lots and the lot fell on Matthias and he was numbered with the 11 apostles. So then when we go to chapter two, it says in when Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one accord. Right. And then they got, they got filled with the Holy spirit. Again, when it says, uh, it doesn't say the spirit of God as it says filled with the Holy spirit. And they begin to speak with tongues, right? <clears throat> so what's going on at different points in time, the Holy spirit is separated from the spirit of God, depending on where you're reading the text. If you read about the Holy spirit in the Tanakh, you already know it's the spirit of God in the new Testament. The way it's written, it makes it seem like it's just its own thing. Because even in Acts chapter five, it says that when they sinned against the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit killed somebody for withholding their tithe, right? So just to be clear, the New Testament set tries to separate the Holy Spirit from the most high. John 20, 21 through 22. So Jesus said to them again. Peace to you, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he said this, and when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. So now he's breathing out the Holy Spirit on them, right? It says he breathed on them. Now it's making it seem like this Holy Spirit coming from him because he breathed on them and said, receive it, right? It's making it seem like his breath was the Holy Spirit. Now they got the Holy Spirit because he breathed on them. But before it was the spirit of God. So Christians will say, see, that means he's God, right? He, the Holy Spirit came upon him. He breathed on the people. Now they got it. He's God. But that's not how it's, it's there's no consistency with that. And excuse me. So we're, <laughs> we're going to see a bunch of problems with this, this, this verse in John about him saying, receive the Holy Spirit. Right. When they got baptized, wasn't they supposed to get the Holy Spirit or no? That's a question. I'm not giving a verdict on that. When they got baptized, were they supposed to get the Holy Spirit upon baptism or way after the fact? Because if they got baptized way at the beginning of his ministry, right, then why is they why are they just now getting it after he's been resurrected after three years? That's a question. Uh, Acts 1, 4 through 8. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Now, in John chapter 20, he was resurrected and he breathed on them, right? Right? But in Acts, this is after the resurrection, right? This is way after the resurrection. Now, according to Acts, it says that he was around for like 40 days, appearing to people and stuff. And he's saying not many days from now, you're going to get the Holy Spirit. But in John, it makes it seem like right after his resurrection, 
he breathed on them the Holy Spirit. So why is he telling them after the fact that they're going to get it? If that makes sense. So John's saying they got the Holy Spirit right after he got resurrected. He breathed on them and they got the Holy Spirit, right? But in Acts, he's saying it's coming and it didn't come until Pentecost. Now, if he was truly killed on Passover, what does Pentecost mean? Count 50. So over a, almost two months went by before they actually got the Holy Spirit in Acts it's co concerning Pentecost, right? Because that's kind of how Pentecost is sets up. In Ch Acts chapter 2, it says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were in one place and then suddenly the Holy Spirit came upon them, right? So, my bad. just want to make sure that this is sharing. So, in John, he gave them the Holy Spirit, but in Acts, they really don't get it until Pentecost. So just something to, to, to think about. When exactly do they get it? According to the text. Now, Paul, right? Paul is not involved in all that, but this is Paul's out of his mouth. For, for Christ did not send me to baptize, 1 Corinthians 1 and 17. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with the wisdom of wor words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. But in Acts 2.38, it says, Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So when when if Paul is saying Christ did not send him to baptize, how are people supposed to get the Holy Spirit? Because that's what Peter says. Let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's almost like once you get baptized, then that comes with it, right? Matthew 28, 19. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations. I don't know why I didn't highlight that part. <laughs> baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Go Holy Spirit. So Jesus said, go there and make disciples of everybody. But Paul saying, uh, Christ didn't send me to do that, but just to preach the gospel. Well, that's not what he said in Matthew 28, 19, because preaching the gospel would be part of baptizing people you preach the gospel they believe it they get baptized right and then they're supposed to get the holy spirit paul said no that's not what he's supposed to do mark 16 15 through 16 and he said to them go into the world go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he who believes and is baptized will be saved but he who does not believe will be condemned so it says preach the gospel to every creature he who believes and is baptized will be saved. So if Paul saying he wasn't sent to baptize, he was preaching. But if they didn't get baptized, they can't be saved. And this is why a lot of people say Paul had his own gospel. By what he says, not not their opinion. He's telling you what he, he clearly says for Christ did not send me to baptize. But in Mark, which. Oh, <laughs> Look it up. Look at Mark chapter 16 in most Bibles. It's going to go all the way to like verse 20, I believe. But the footnote is going to tell you it really stops at verse 9 or 8. Verses 9 through 20 were added. So look at your footnotes. So it really ends when Mary and uh, whoever goes to the tomb leave and it says that they, they were scared and didn't tell nobody. Then it, there's footnotes to tell you that the rest of that was added. And the part that was added, it says, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. So once you heard the gospel, unless you got baptized, you wasn't going to get saved. So when it says, for Christ did not send me to baptize in 1 Corinthians 1.17, then how did people get saved? Because that baptism is like the what sealed the deal. This is why when you read the New Testament, it's just really not cohesive when you actually study what's going on and what's recommended.
if you just talk about what is recommended, what is the, what does the New Testament want? It tells me to get baptized here. Over here it says you didn't have to get baptized. Over here they had the Holy Spirit already, but over here they didn't. Like, what's going on? So again, Acts 2.38, Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So what happened to being baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? That's in Matthew 28, 19. But Peter's not saying that. Peter said, just now it's just in the name of Jesus. But Jesus said, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. So there's no consistency of the baptism in whose name you're supposed to get baptized in to get this Holy Spirit. Acts 8, 14 through 16. Now, when the apostles were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God and sent Peter and John to them, who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. So here it's telling you that the Holy Spirit didn't come on nobody. But then once they realized that they only prayed in the name, of, they only got baptized in the name of Jesus again. No Father, Son, Holy Spirit, only in the name of Jesus. So what's going on? Peter says only in the name of Jesus. And it says uh, they sent Peter and John to them. So now Peter and John is only baptizing in the name of Jesus. So what happened to the Father and the uh, Holy Spirit? They didn't get baptized in the name of the Father and the Holy Spirit, only in the name of Jesus now. So it's weird. And, and maybe that's why they didn't get the Holy Spirit because they wasn't baptized in the name of the Holy Spirit. I don't know. That's that's probably what happened there. If from a Christian perspective, of course. <clears throat> now, again, the problem with the Holy Spirit, as, as I've pointed this out, the Holy Spirit in the New Testament is completely different in the Tanakh. John 16, 13. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, well, Jesus is telling you it's going to come, even though we read about people already having it. Like, why does it have to come if people already have it? You know what I'm saying? We read about it. Simeon had it in Luke. Zacharias had it. Jesus supposedly had it. You know what I'm saying? It came up on Mary. Like, why do you have to wait for it to come, right? It says, however, when the spirit of truth has come, I thought Jesus was the truth. But now, all of a sudden, the spirit of truth has to come. He will guide you into all truth. So when Jesus says he's the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes with the Father but through him, now he's saying something, some other spirit is going to come, was telling you he's not this spirit. Because I thought you were the one who to guide people in all truth, right? For he would not speak on his own authority. Well, if he's God, wouldn't he have all authority? And if he's Jesus, wouldn't you have that authority too? Because you're the son, but you're really God. So you're kind of the father too, right? But it says he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you th things to come. Who does he have to hear it from? Whatever he hears, who does he have to hear that from? If he has to hear what to say, he's not God. He's not the spirit of God. He's separate. You see how they keep separating the Holy Spirit from God. So now he doesn't even have the same authority as God because he has to hear what God has to say to tell you. John 6, 13, this is out of the mouth of Jesus. He's telling you it's the real truth because he's calling it the spirit of truth that will guide you when he comes and he won't speak on his own authority. He doesn't say he's going to speak on my authority. Now, it does say in other places, well, the Father's going to send him in my name. But again, he still says he's not going to speak on his own authority. If he's really God, whose authority does he need to speak? So it, it still doesn't work. 
Acts 1, 6 through 7. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons which the father has put in his own authority. So he's telling you he's not God either because they asked him a question. He's saying only God can answer that. That's in his authority. That's in his time and season when he want to do things. John 14, 24. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. So if those words are not his, he's not speaking on his own authority, and neither does the Holy Spirit speak on his own authority. So neither one of them are God. John 15, 15, no longer do I call you servants for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends for all things that I heard from my father. I have made known to you. So Jesus has to hear things from his father and the Holy Spirit cannot speak on his own authority. Neither one of them are God. The Trinity is not made up of three equal people, according to the New Testament. So if somebody tells you that and you read them these verses, there's no way to fix it. They're not the same. They're not. And they, they'll they tell you, oh, well, you know, you don't believe, you don't understand. It's like, you don't even believe your own text, but you want me to believe it, right? The Holy Ghost. We talked about paraclete. Paracletos. <clears throat> An advocate, intercessor, con consular, a consular, comforter, helper, paraclete. That's this is that they've made the Holy Ghost its own thing, right? What is the name of the Holy Spirit? Matthew 20 and 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now it does say, Jesus said, um, He will send the Spirit, the the advocate, which the Father will send in my name. But if you're getting baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What's the Holy Spirit's name? And Matthew, remember, it was the Spirit of God. And now it's in the name of Jesus. But we know they're not the same. Jesus is going to get a new name in the book of Revelation. In Revelation, Jesus has a God. Revelation chapter 3, he's talking about the temple of my God, the name of my God. Uh, in Revelation chapter 1, it says God gave Jesus a revelation. So they're not the same. Jesus is not the Holy Spirit according to him. We've covered this. So again, Matthew 12, 31 through 32. Therefore, I say to you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the spirit will not be forgiven men. Anyone who speaks a word against the son of man, it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him either in this age or in the age to come. They're not the same because you can say things about Jesus, but you can't speak against the Holy Spirit. That's not equal. The advocate is the truth according to Jesus. John 14, 6, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 16, and I will pray the Father and he will shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. What do you mean another? If you're the only way in the truth, why are we seeking something, something else? Again, John 16, 7 through 14. But very truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. If Jesus is the truth, why does something else have to come? And see, the Muslims picked up on this, and then they say that that advocate is Muhammad. They'll say, oh, yeah, Jesus spoke about Muhammad. He's right there. He has to come after Jesus. This is where the Muslims use the New Testament to promote Muhammad. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin, the righteousness and judgment and about sin, because people do not believe in me about righteousness because I am going to the Father, where you can see me no longer, and about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. The prince of this world? So now he's making Satan a prince of the world, right? That's weird. But verse 12, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will only he will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. So now we got a problem. 
Now he's saying, because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. But before, it says he can't speak on his own authority. And Jesus says his words are not his. But now he's saying this spirit that's coming is going to receive what he hears from Jesus. He's saying, because it is from me that he will receive, because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. You see how it flip flops one minute. The Holy Spirit can't do nothing on its own. It's got to get its own authority. Jesus can't do nothing on its, his own. He's got to get authority. Now, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit got to get answers from him. So Jesus is on earth, but the advocate is being sent in the future to prove things. When Jesus leaves to guide you in truth, Jesus will be gone, but the helper will stay. Right. But he still needs Jesus to approve of what he has to say. But Jesus says, I can't do nothing on my own. Everything I hear is from the father. And so this is why people say whoever wrote John was not just one author because it, it's like a piece together book because it's it's flip flopping. Every other every every other chapter is is it's not making any sense. One minute he can do all things, the next minute he can't. You see what I'm saying? So it doesn't make sense that Jesus has to go away to send you somebody when if he's the Holy Spirit, it's really just him. Why doesn't he just say that? Excuse me, all, all this mystery going on when and it says in Deuteronomy, it's not in heaven that you should say who will go up and bring it down to us. It's in your mouth for you can do it. Like the Torah is very clear. This is what you got to do. Do it. The New Testament is all this mysterious talk. And it's so it's so Greek. I'm just going to say that. It's so Greek. <clears throat> who received the advocate? John 14, 26. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, who the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I, I have said to you. Now, that's what out of Jesus' mouth. He says, the Father will send in my name. Something's going to go going to teach you everything that I said to you. In Galatians 1, 12. It says, I did not receive any, I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. So Paul doesn't say he got he received the Holy Spirit. Paul saying Jesus himself taught him everything. He got a revelation from Jesus. He doesn't say anything this about this. He doesn't say the spirit came upon me. Now you can interpret that by saying, oh, well, this that's what a revelation is. The spirit comes upon you, right? But again, the spirit doesn't speak on his own authority. If Jesus was that authority, he would be God. But he clearly says he's not God and he's not the Holy Spirit because you can blaspheme, blaspheme Jesus, but you can't blaspheme the Holy Spirit. You see, there's too much flip flopping of what really is Jesus in the Holy Spirit's relationship. They're not the same out of the mouth of Jesus. Revelation 1 1. The revelation from Jesus Christ was God gave him. So if 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 Paul got this revelation from Jesus, right? But God's the one giving Jesus the revelations. Remember, I can't do nothing on my own. But for what I hear the Father speak, I say. That's what Jesus says, right? So if this revelation that Paul got from Jesus was really from God, <laughs> where's the Holy Spirit? You see, everywhere you go with this, something's missing. There's a piece missing. There's always a piece missing. So the revelation from Jesus Christ, Revelation 1-1, the revelation from Jesus Christ was God gave him to show his servants, which must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant, John. So now Jesus sends angels to say what's going on, right? But he got it from God. Where's the Holy Spirit? There's always a piece missing.
Now, who's going to give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation? Ephesians 1, 17. I keep asking that God, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. What's the spirit of wisdom? Wisdom is its own thing, right? A person can be very, very wise, but nobody can, nobody would really say, oh, he has the Holy Spirit because he's wise. That doesn't mean you have the Holy Spirit. There's a bunch of atheists who are wise, right? There's so many wise people in the world. People create computers and robots and all these things. Do they have the Holy Spirit or they are they just wise? So you can't equate the spirit of wisdom with the Holy Spirit. So he says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus has a God. The glorious Father may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Why doesn't it say give you the Holy Spirit? Why doesn't it say give you the spirit of Jesus? It says give you the spirit of wisdom. It doesn't say of oh, the revelation of Jesus either. Give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Jesus said it was coming when he left, right? Remember, Jesus said, I got to go away. And then the spirit of truth was going to come. So Jesus said it was coming when he left. So why is Paul praying for it to come to his churches? Why didn't they get it at baptism like Paul? Paul got baptized. Oh, remember, Paul said he didn't, he wasn't told to preach by Jesus. Christ did not send him to preach. I'm sorry, Christ did not send him to baptize. Let me back up. Let's go back. For Christ did not send me to baptize. So maybe that's why he's praying for this Holy Spirit to come to his people because he didn't baptize them, so they didn't get the Holy Spirit. Remember Peter, Acts 2.38, Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So according to Peter, you got to get baptized. Acts 9.17-18, And Ananias, and Ananias went his way and entered the house, and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received the sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. So Paul got the Holy Spirit and he got baptized. They all happened at the same time, right? It says he got the Holy Spirit and then the scales fell off and then he got baptized. But here in Ephesians, he's asking for God to give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation. But if they had the Holy Spirit, wouldn't they already have all that? Because he's supposed to teach you all things, right? Jesus said he's going to tell you everything. So maybe they didn't get baptized because that's not what Paul was supposed to do. But that's what Jesus told everybody else to do. When was the Holy Spirit given? So the book of John is so all over the place. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's really out of order. Um, John 7, 38 through 39, he that believed on me, and, and that's okay. It's it, I, I don't even really care that John's out of order because there's certain books in the Tanakh that's not necessarily in order. Right. But because that's not the point of the, the Torah is not a, the Tanakh is not a history book. But the point of this not being in order is because of what it says right here. John 7, 38 through 39. He that believed on me, as the scriptures hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the spirit, which they that believed on him should receive for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So when exactly was Jesus glorified? How can you say the Holy Spirit was not yet given? Right? Remember in John 20, 22, and when they had when he and with that he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. So it makes it seem like it didn't happen to after he was glorified from his baptism. Right? But he says, unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. 
So they can't even, Jesus didn't leave yet. So how did he, they get the Holy Spirit? If he said it won't come, he says, unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. Who's the advocate? The Holy Spirit. How did he breathe on them, the Holy Spirit, if he didn't leave? Furthermore, how did Zechariah, Mary, John, Simeon get the Holy Spirit if it didn't come to after Jesus left earth? How? John 7, 38 to 39 said it wasn't given. Okay. You're going to have to explain what Zechariah, Mary, and John and Simeon had called the Holy Spirit if it wasn't given. Then he told his disciples it won't come unless he goes away, but then he breathes on them the Holy Spirit before he goes away. How is it possible? Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. Luke 1 15 for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. He shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. Um, we're talking about the Holy Spirit given to John the Baptist. Luke 1 41. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Luke 1 67, his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Luke 2 25, and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. The same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. How, if unless Jesus goes away, you don't get the advocate? How is it possible? John, Elizabeth, Zacharias, Simeon, all holy, all had Holy Ghost. Jesus didn't go away. Right? They got it before. Matter of fact, three of this, three of these people had it before he was even born. So how does John 7 38 through 39 said the Holy Spirit was not yet given? Is this two Holy Spirits? Is that a different Holy Spirit? So Going back to what I started with, the Holy Spirit was given in the Tanakh without a baptism. Then all of a sudden, you had to get baptized and then you get the Holy Spirit. So if we go back real quick, the Spirit of God given without baptism, Numbers 11 and 7, then I will come down and talk with you there. I will take take the spirit that is upon you and will put the same upon them. They shall bear the burden of the people with you that you may not bear it yourself alone. So now Moses and he got some other people helping him. They got the Holy Spirit. Numbers eleven twenty five. 25. And the Lord came down in the cloud and spake unto them and took the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the 70 elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. So now you got 70 people helping Moses with the people. Judges 3, 8 through 11. Therefore, the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. He sold them into the hand of Cushon, Rishathaim, king of Mesopotamia. <clears throat> and the children of Israel served Cush Cushon, Rishathaim, eight, eight years. And when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer to the children of Israel who delivered them. Othani, even Othaniel, the son of Canaz, Caleb's younger brother, and the spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he judged Israel and went out to war. And the Lord delivered Cushan, Rishathaim, king of Mesopotamia, into his hand, and his hand prevailed against Cushan, Rishathaim, and the hand and the land had rest for forty years. And Othaniel, the son of Canaz, died. But we see the spirit of the Lord came upon him, not the Holy Spirit, but the spirit of the Lord came upon him, not something separate. Not a part of the Trinity, but the spirit of the of the Most High came upon him. No baptism, no baptism on Moses or and no baptism on the 70 elders. They all got Holy Spirit without nothing to do with Jesus or baptism. <clears throat> Judges 634, the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and he blew a trumpet and uh, Abie Abiezer was gathered after him. No baptism. Judges eleven twenty nine. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah, and he passed over Gilead and Manasseh, and passed over Mizpah and Gilead, and Mizpah of Gilead the he passed over unto the children of Ammon. No baptism. 
First Samuel 16, 13, then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. The spirit of the Lord came upon David, not the Holy Spirit by itself, but the spirit of the Most High came upon David. Second Chronicles 24, 20, and the spirit of God came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, the priest, which stood above the people and said to them, unto them, thus, thus saith God, why transgress ye the commandments of the Lord that she cannot prosper? that ye cannot prosper because ye have forsaken the Lord. He have also forsaken you. Oh, how interesting that somebody with the Holy spirit said, keep the Torah or you're going to have some problems like God forsaking you. What happens when you have the Holy spirit, you obey the law. In the future, Ezekiel 36, 27 says, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. So if people truly had the Holy Spirit in the New Testament, nobody would be telling you to not keep the law. Any Christian that tells you he has the Holy Spirit from the God of Israel and is against Torah observance, he don't have it. Ezekiel 39, 29, and I will not hide my face from them anymore, for I shall have poured out my spirit on the house of Israel, says the Lord God. No baptism. How's it possible? I will pour out my spirit on you. Turn at my rebuke. Surely I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make my words known to you. No baptism. Turn at my rebuke. I will pour out my spirit upon you. Or I will pour out my spirit on you. Where's the baptism? Is the Holy Spirit with Jesus at the right hand of God? So we see there's there, there's always a, something missing, right? Mark 16, 19. So then after the Lord has spoken to him to them, he received he was received up into the heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. Where's the Holy Spirit? If Jesus is at the right hand of God and there's a Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, where's the Holy Ghost at? Luke twenty two sixty nine. 69, hereafter, the son of man will sit at the right hand of, pa of the power of God. Where's the Holy Spirit? Acts 2, 33, therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the father, the promise of the Holy Spirit. He poured out this, which you now see in here. He received, received the promise of the Holy Spirit. Excuse me. Being exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit. What is that promise of the Holy Spirit? And if he's at the right hand of God, if the Holy did that means remember, remember, he says he has to go away and the Holy Spirit has to come down to the people. Right? So there was God and the Holy Spirit in heaven, Jesus was on earth. Then Jesus goes up to heaven and the Holy Spirit came down to earth. And now it's Jesus and God on, in, the, in heaven. And the Holy Spirit's on earth. Is that how it works? So before the New Testament, it was only God and the Holy Spirit. And when David said, don't take your spirit from me. Where was Jesus at? When God said he poured out his spirit on the house of Israel, where was Jesus at? See, there's always something missing. Acts 7, 56. And it said, look, I see the heavens open and the son of man standing at the right hand of God. Where's the Holy Spirit? So we see the problem with the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And there's always somebody missing when God is around, all three are not present, right? It's either God and the Holy spirit. And this is of course from, from a Christian perspective, it's always God and his Holy spirit with somebody, no Jesus or God and Jesus is Jesus is at the right hand of God and no mention of the Holy spirit. 
It doesn't say the Son of Man sat at the right hand of power of God and the Holy Spirit was on the left. Where's the Holy Spirit at? Because if the Holy Spirit is God, then that would only be two. That's not a trinity. So with that being said, I'm going to stop there. And that's part A. And um, appreciate y'all. Like, subscribe, share. And um, 